It's very normal to have a nightmare. It would be very strange. One of us said they'd never had a nightmare before. I just had one last night. You know, I, I saw Squid Game. It gave me a nightmare, and that's the truth. Nightmares can often include, you know, facing some of the most painful aspects of who we are, that you don't know what part that is until you confront it. So we're talking about bad dreams. We all had bad dreams. But the minute we start using the terminology a nightmare, what really separates that clinically, you wake up from the nightmares. Last night, when you were dreaming, you became flagrantly psychotic. Now, before you reject my diagnosis of your nighttime psychosis, let me give you five good reasons. First, when you were dreaming, you started to see things which were not there, so you were hallucinating. Secondly, you believed things that couldn't possibly be true, so you were delusional. Third, you became confused about time, place, and person, so you're suffering from disorientation. Fourth, you have these wildly fluctuating emotions, something that psychiatrists call being affectively labile. And then how wonderful, you woke up this morning and you forgot most, if not all of that dream experience. So you're suffering from amnesia. If you were to experience any one of those five things while you're awake, you could be seeking psychological or psychiatric help. And for reasons that we're only now starting to understand, this seems to be a perfectly normal biological and psychological process at night. Freshman year of college, I'm living with this girl, Kelly. Um, and I just need to preface this with, we were really good friends. So I had seen the Halloween movies maybe a couple times. So I get like a knock on my door as if I had woken up out of my sleep. Kelly is asleep. We had little peepholes and like I look through the peephole and Michael Myers is on the other side of this peephole, right? So when we talk about nightmares, I need to take a step back. So what is the broader topic of nightmares? Parasomnias. What are parasomnias? These are gonna be unwanted emotions, behaviors, actions, thoughts, dreams that occur as you're falling asleep, as you're waking up, or transitioning between the different stages of sleep. Uh, how do I categorize parasomnia? One of the classic examples when we talk about a non-REM parasomnia, sleepwalking. Then we talk about REM parasomnias, things that happen in REM sleep. And now the answer is what? Nightmares. One way of understanding the reason why children may have more nightmares is because they're closer to the unconscious than adults are, their capacity for rational thought isn't fully developed. It's the old monster in the closet question. Kids experience monsters in the closet, monsters under the bed. It is a reality for them. In other words, the monster in the closet is a real monster in the closet because they haven't developed their rationality to the capacity where they are discounting the experience of the monster being in the closet. Michael Myers is on the other side of this peephole, right? And he's like, isn't he known for the big knife, maybe a machete? I don't know. But he has like two big butcher knives in his hands. One way of, of thinking about a way to understand a nightmare is that it's an experience of a buildup of tension in the unconscious. In other words, there can potentially be dreams that come prior to nightmares that are almost like knocks on the door. Like there's something that wants to be brought into awareness. So there's this little kind of tap on the door through a dream image. And for whatever reason, you know, we don't necessarily turn our attention to that. So the knock gets louder. So the image becomes more emotionally evocative. So what ends up happening is the knock gets louder and louder and louder until we have no other recourse but to turn our attention to it because it has terrified us. Dreams are about expanding consciousness, including the most authentic and genuine experience of yourself. Sometimes that includes facing painful aspects of who we are, and nightmares can present those painful aspects. And I like open the door, and Kelly's asleep still, and he like walks in, and he like gives me a knife, and 
then we walk over to her bed and like like start stabbing her i don't even know and then i woke up in sweat and i like felt really bad anyway that was definitely the craziest dream i've ever had if someone were trying to flip the script on a nightmare i would suggest that they confront whatever it is that is terrifying them in the nightmare, whether it be a malevolent individual that's pursuing them, a feared situation, whatever it is that is generating all of the fear, to turn one's attention to that. To face it, if you can, in the nightmare itself, if for whatever reason that that's not possible, to bring that feared situation into waking life.